What do you have when you have the number one overall pick, a generational quarterback prospect, and a veteran quarterback playing the best football of his career? A debate for the age. You asked for it, and we delivered. It's Fan Friday, and you guys, the fans, chose today's topic for POV. And be sure to let us know in the comments your take, as we could use it in a future video. Now to today's topic. Is there a team facing greater uncertainty than the Chicago Bears? The Chicago Bears are facing one of the most interesting offseasons after being officially eliminated from playoff contention Sunday. Despite winning their game against the Falcons and moving to 7-9, the Bears will hold the number one overall pick in the 2024 draft thanks to its trade with the Carolina Panthers for last year's number one pick. However, this year's situation feels a bit different. Unlike last year, Chicago seems to be on the verge of playoff contention and quarterback Justin Fields is playing some of the best football of his life. The draft also has a quarterback in USC's Caleb Williams, which has long been considered the best quarterback in the class, akin to the likes of Trevor Lawrence or Andrew Luck. With so much at stake, Bears general manager Ryan Poles will have his hands full trying to figure out the best way forward for the organization. However, it shouldn't be that difficult. Chicago needs to pick Caleb Williams with the top pick. I understand Bears fans are loving Fields right now, so much so that they even chanted We Want Justin during the team's game Sunday. While Sunday's performance by Fields is certainly one of the best he's ever had, the quarterback has been inconsistent in his three years in the Windy City. This season, Fields ranks 30th among 31 qualified quarterbacks in fourth quarter QBR at 20.4. This has been a trend for Fields, as he has ranked 33rd out of 38 qualified quarterbacks in QBR at 41.4 since entering the league in 2021. He's also 36th out of 38 in completion percentage at 56.2 and last in fourth quarter interception with 16 over the same span. While many may consider the record to not be a quarterback stat, the Bears haven't won much with Fields under center, going just 10-27 when he's been a starter and have gone 6-7 and since his rookie year with him out of the lineup. Add his 3-12 record in one-score games and it becomes clear Fields doesn't play his best when it matters most. It's been three years of fields, and what you see is what you get. He's an elite runner with some of the best open field ability in the league, there's no doubt about it. But he's a guy who cannot win the game when his team needs him to pass it. He makes wild throws here and there, but he's overall inconsistent in passing the ball, as shown by his low completion percentage. This isn't even getting into his sack and fumbling issue that he has faced due to holding onto the ball too long in the pocket. Now, Caleb Williams is not without flaws, I get that. He's had this, his share of bad moments as any 20-something college kid does. He also has a tendency to hold onto the ball too long in hopes of making a bigger play. I understand that. However, much of the things against Williams are blown way out of proportion. He cried <laughs> after a loss? I've seen grown men cry after losses in NFL games before too. I mean, I've cried even myself after some <laughs> tough losses. He tweeted at a troll after the Notre Dame game? There have been plenty of pro athletes who have done that. Look at Troll Embiid. Does that concern me? Not as much as it does others. When looking at Williams, the football player, the talent is clear. He's completed 66.9% of his passes for 10,082 yards, 93 touchdowns, and 14 interceptions, while rushing for 966 yards and 27 more scores, going 23-10 and 10 in the 33 games he started. People will argue that Williams plays worse against top competition, but that's not even true. When looking at his career starts against top 25 team, Williams actually plays very close to his career averages, throwing for more yards and throwing just slightly less touchdowns and slightly more interception in his career. The argument then becomes he doesn't win those games, going 4-9 against top 25 opponents all time. But the same field supporters will throw away the record when that gets brought up, so I'll do the same. Williams has also proven to be more clutch than Fields. In one-score games over his career, Williams has thrown for 3,669 yards, 32 touchdowns, and just four interceptions. In the fourth quarter in his career, Williams has thrown for 1,680 yards, 16 touchdowns, and just one interception. That doesn't even take into account his rushing totals. Just look at this play from Williams as the Trojans trail Oregon State on the road last year. Williams is given a good pocket, he hits his back foot, sees the corner bite on the under route, and delivers a perfect ball to the pylon for his receiver who catches it in stride for the game-winning score. If that video isn't good enough for you, or it doesn't show enough escapability, check out this clutch run this season. With just over a minute left, Williams calls his own number on a quarterback draw and makes a couple of defenders miss on his way to the end zone. What Williams also adds is his ability to keep his eyes downfield when he escapes the pocket, which results in bigger passing plays. While Fields has gotten better at this, Williams already seems to be naturally better at it. Check out this play. 
After initial pressure, Williams steps back to buy more time, then steps back up into the pocket. When he's pressured, he reverses field, makes an impressive juke on the defender, and immediately gets his eyes up and downfield, where he delivers a strike for a score. If you feel he can't escape the pocket as well as Fields, just check out this big run against Utah last season. Now, I understand Fields is playing his best football right now, and the excitement in Chicago is palpable. But when looking at Williams, it's clear even now that he's a far more polished passer while also having a similar off-script ability that Fields is known for. Now, one could argue trading away the top pick for accumulating more draft assets, which is fair. But if you take Williams, you could still build around him using the second first-round pick to draft another wideout while trading Fields for a mid-round pick. This would also give the Bears the financial flexibility two or three years to come to help them acquire more free agents and keep players in-house with extension. Fields has done a fine job in Chicago, and he should continue to be a solid starting quarterback in the NFL elsewhere. But if the Bears are serious about contending and winning Super Bowls, not only this next season, but for years to come, Williams is the obvious choice, and fans should no longer kid themselves. But what do you think? Should the Bears change it up with Williams or stick with Fields? If the Bears go with neither Fields nor Williams, one potential signal caller they could end up with is Drake May. For more on him, check out our recent POV. Enjoy the final week of the regular season, NFL fans. See you later.